So we're gonna answer this question using presidential assassinations. <laughs> this thing cracks me up. Well, it's a few days before Halloween and also a few days before the US election and I thought I'd talk about how presidents affect the stock market. Do presidents affect the economy? Well, during the campaign season, each of the candidates seems to think that they will. It's economy. The economy. 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 Economy, economy, economy. Man, that just feels weird when you say that a lot of times in a row. Is that really what we say? This is obviously a very hard question to answer. Some people will take naive approaches to this and look at when a president is in office and how the economy evolves in there. But the problem is when we elect presidents, we are thinking about the economy. In fact, one of the strongest predictors of whether a president will be reelected is how the economy is performing. So does the president affect the economy or is it the economy that affects the president? Of course, it probably goes both ways, but is there a clean way that we can look at the impact a president has on the economy? Well, we can get at this looking at presidential assassinations. <laughs> As awful as assassinations are, they work really well for answering this question about the importance of presidents because they're sudden, they're unexpected, and they change who the president is. Now, of course, there are a lot of things going on in the economy, and it's always hard to measure an event and then how it ties to other big things going on in the economy. So we need some way to measure what the expected response in the economy is when we have a president assassinated. And it turns out that the stock market works really well for this. Now, let me clarify, the stock market is not the economy. It's only a piece of the economy, but the stock market has immediate changes and they respond. This is the efficient market hypothesis, right? Well, some economists decided to look at this question and they created this table of the stock market's response to assassination attempts. It doesn't matter if this was a successful assassination or not, just that there had been an attempt on the president's life. The most recent one was Ronald Reagan. That was back in March, 1981. It was an attempt. It was not successful. And the stock market hardly moved at all. It dropped just the slightest bit, but nothing really big happened. Now you might say, hey, well, we don't expect that. That wasn't a successful attempt. Well, let's go all the way back to the most famous assassination, and that is Abraham Lincoln. What happened when he was shot? Well, the stock market fell, but again, just by the tiniest of bits. So it seems like even in successful attempts, we might not see that much of a change. Well, if we go out and look at everything, these are actually some of the smallest changes that we see. On some of the successful ones, we see larger changes, but the largest change we have is when President McKinley was assassinated back in September 1901. Now, there are a lot of American students watching this right now who are saying, wait, William McKinley was assassinated? Yeah, so there have been four presidents who were assassinated and the two most famous ones are Abraham Lincoln and JFK, but Garfield and McKinley were also assassinated. We just don't talk about them as much, which is fascinating because the McKinley story is so interesting. Back in 1901, the White House was much more accessible than it is today. People would just come up, they would meet the president, shake his hand, and on one of these events where the president was meeting people, an anarchist just came up to McKinley while he's doing his own task and shoots him. The shot wasn't immediately fatal. It hit him in the abdomen and there was about a week, I think, where they were trying to decide whether McKinley was actually going to die or not. In fact, the consensus is if he had been shot today, he would have survived, but the medical technologies were not advanced enough at this point for them to save his life. But now this brings up this puzzle. McKinley had such a big impact on the stock market and yet we hardly even know his name, let alone remember that he was assassinated. Why did his death have such a big impact on the stock market. Well, it turns out that he had a vice president who had very different economic views than he did. His vice president was Theodore Roosevelt and Theodore Roosevelt was well known for his opposition to monopolies. He wanted to go after these businesses and break them up. McKinley, on the other hand, oversaw the creation of many of these mo monopolies. He wasn't directly doing it, but during his presidency, all of these companies were just merging together like some Power Ranger coming together and forming large mega companies. And he basically did nothing while this was happening. And Theodore Roosevelt said, no, we need to break these companies up. Now you can imagine if you are invested in these companies and you see that the person who was fine with your companies coming together suddenly dies and is replaced by the person who adamantly opposed these things, you might be worried about the future of your investments.
And this is actually how we're gonna see the direct effect of McKinley on the stock market because we can look at companies that had recently completed a big merger and would be threatened to be broken up by Roosevelt. And we can look at companies that are not in that situation that are just doing their regular run of the mill type thing. And we can compare the performance of stock prices when McKinley is shot. When we look at the stock market on the day that McKinley was shot, these stocks for those companies that had just recently been merged together, they dropped significantly, whereas the stocks in these other companies that weren't under threat, they don't hardly change at all. But the story gets better. It's not just that McKinley was shot. It's that he started to improve in health. Two days later, a big report came out saying, hey, McKinley's getting better. We think he's going to recover. He's not going to die. Well, now if I think, hey, the guy is coming back. It's no longer gonna be the one threatening my companies, my investments. Then you might wanna buy into these big companies. And sure enough, we see this huge spike in prices for these companies that had dropped in price, for these companies that were at threat of being broken up. And again, not much of that response in these companies that had no threats. The drama continues to unfold. His health declines on Friday the 13th. And with that decline in health, we see the drop in stocks. We're seeing this pattern unfold. And the next day on Saturday, the 14th, he dies. Roosevelt immediately comes out and says that he plans on continuing the policy that McKinley followed and people will feel comforted. They're like, oh, maybe he's not gonna break up these companies. And then they invest in those companies again. Of course, then Roosevelt did like a lot of antitrust action, way more than anyone before him. So I see two lessons in this example from McKinley's assassination. One, the president does matter when the president has a very active economic policy, when there's a clear idea of what the president wants to do and which companies that's going to affect. The second lesson is actually more of a caveat, something I wanna just be careful about when we're discussing this. This is specific to the United States. The United States has a system where the president isn't supposed to have a huge role in the economy, but there are other countries where the president plays a much more active role. So of course we would expect to see bigger effects in countries where the president has more control over economic policy. In this video, we mentioned antitrust policy and monopolies, and there is currently a huge antitrust case starting against Google. I made a video about that. You should check it out right there. And also you should subscribe so we can see you next time on Market Power.